Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to continue our GIMP tutorials and we're going to be talking about layer masks. Everything you ever needed to know about layer masks. Now, in our previous discussions, we talked about how to set up our workspace. We talked about selections and a very fast run over of the basic tools. So make sure you're familiar with some of those elements here. And let's go ahead and head on over to GIMP. So we're going to be working with this picture of a cat, and then I also download a picture of Mars, and eventually we will use some degree of masking to put a transparent cat floating above Mars. Why not, right? I mean, come on. We all want to go there. So um, before we jump in here, let's go ahead and make sure we have our workspace set up with our uh, various tabs. We want to have the Layers tab. You're going to want the Channels tab. You're going to want the Selection Editor. And then I'm going to use various brushes and gradient tools as what we're going to use here. So those are the places where I would like you to make sure that you have those set up. If you remember, uh, you can just click on this, these arrows here by the docs and add the tabs that might be missing. All right, so... Next, let's talk about adding the layer masks themselves. You can add them under the layer menu under mask, and there's various options. And you can add them by right-clicking in the layers tab, and this is usually where I add layer masks from. Now, as a brief aside before we get into actually adding them, a layer mask is going to add a white to black gradient over the image, which is going to impact its basic transparency. And that is going to be an important factor because you might want to fade something in. You can use this to extenuate uh, colorations. There's so many different applications of layer masking that make it such a useful tool. Uh, in fact, on the latest book that I did, I did some layer masking to layer myself over top. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So here I don't have the actual uh, GIMP file with me on this particular computer here, but you can see what I did with this one here is I used the image there and I used a faint gradient layer mask to fade myself slowly into the background. So this is something that you can do with layer masks in this application as a book cover. So let's go ahead and talk about how to make these work. We're going to come on over here, right click and add the layer mask. Now we have a couple different options and note we also have an option to invert the mask. So if you have invert the mask, everything I say here is going to be the opposite. <laughs> so the white is full opacity, meaning that we're going to have a white layer mask and what we physically see in the image shouldn't change because white means 100% of everything is going through. Black would mean that nothing in the image is showing full transparency. So any degree of grayscale throughout is going to give us just a faint uh, coming through of that particular image there. Now, Layers Alpha Channel deals with the Alpha Channel, the transparency channel as it is. And there's Layers Alpha Channel and Transfer Layers Alpha Channel. These are practically the same. There is a slight difference in that the transfer layers alpha channel is going to add a few extra places that the layer alpha channel will not. Um, the scope of difference of that is so minuscule for most basic applications, those two functions are going to behave the same. Selection is going to be anything that we have previously selected is going to be applied to the mask. And then a grayscale copy of the layer is going to take our image, uh, our layer, I should say. It's going to make a grayscale copy and apply the mask as a grayscale over it. So that's going to cause things like in this one here, of course, where the cat's laying on the darker sleeping bag is going to be more black and where the window blinds are going to be more white. So it's going to be uh, a heavier transparency uh, up at the top and there's going to be a lot more opacity down at the bottom if I were to do that. Now, channels requires us to have channels set up, which is why we added the, the channels tag. And we'll go ahead and talk about doing those at the end. Basically, a channel is going to be very similar to doing a selection, only you can save the selections for later, like we did in the paths before. All right, so now getting back over here, we're going to go ahead and uh, add our layer mask. And if we do a full opacity, what we see is nothing appears to have changed. 
And what we can do then is I can grab my various toolbars here. So if I have a solid white and let's just grab a paintbrush tool, nothing changes. If I grab and switch this to black, you'll see that the cat will disappear as if it has been erased. The reality is it has not been erased. It just has a transparency overlaid it because of the mask. If I right click and I disable the layer mask, you'll see that it comes back. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And then let's also go ahead and hit the show layer mask. This guy here is going to show us exactly what is on the mask. Uh, without any of the image. This can be useful if you're trying to do some fine tuning or anything like that. For the most part, I usually just disable that one so I can work directly on that mask. So let's go ahead and delete this mask and we'll add a black one instead. Okay, so here you see that the cat completely disappears. Now we're going to show the subtlety of how this works by utilizing a gradient. I'm going to use a uh, custom, which is going to be a foreground to a background gradient. Okay. And since we're still painting over the mask layer and I grab my gradient tool, this is going to paint some colorations from the top to the bottom. So you can kind of see the cat is slowly coming out there. Let's go ahead and do a little bit higher so you can kind of get a better idea what's going on here. And of course I can do uh, and however the gradient is angled is the case. I'm going to go ahead and hold the control and get myself quite a nice uh, little balance. Just go about halfway up and you'll kind of see what it's going to do. Now, of course, these checkers back there kind of show us a little bit about uh, it's just the transparency. So in order to kind of see how this looks, let's just go ahead and add a foreground and a background color layer. Uh, so this one's going to be white move it underneath and you can see that the cat is moving from a white in and then we'll add another layer and we'll call this one the foreground color which is going to give us black so you can see that this one gives us a little bit this is a nicer looking image where it kind of fades out the top where it is accentuates the kitty a little bit but let's go ahead and do another application that a lot of people do let's colorize the cat and decolorize everything else so let's just hide these two layers and we're going to go ahead for now we're going to delete the layer mask this is a common one you find a lot of tutorials i'm just going to show you how to do it what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate the layer and then we're going to let's hide the top the top layer and the bottom layer we're going to come over under our colors and we are going to um we we want to make it grayscale. So one way to do this is just to do the saturation and drop our saturation down to zero. This is going to give us a grayscale image. So well, I'm going to show the top layer, which is color, bottom layer, which is grayscale. Color, grayscale. So what we're going to do here is let's get rid of the top layer by making the whole thing uh, transparent by adding a black layer. And now what we can do is we can grab the paintbrush tool and then we can colorize the cat just by deleting or coloring white over the transparency layer. Now notice that in order to, to get around the fuzziness of the edges there, I'm actually have a paintbrush with quite a bit of a feathered edge and we can change the featheriness of these you can even change the opacity which is going to soften it up even more if you wanted to and I'm going to come back and get that ear in a bit because if I go up there with this bigger tool then I'm going to expose more of that than I would probably like so let's go ahead and do that And you can see that I goofed up and overrode a little bit there. Oh, I exposed a little bit of blue. We can actually just fix that because it is a layer mask. Just go back on over it with black the other way. Okay. Let's go back to our white. We're going to reduce our brush size by about half. And then we'll go ahead and patch in the ear. And that's how easy it is to do a colored cat with a black and white background. So that's kind of nice. Let's go ahead and send our kitty to Mars, shall we? Does that sound fun? Now, you can do other fun things. Um, you can mask to selection. So 
If we have that, you can actually see, oh, I have a little bit of error down there. Let's uh, deselect that and let's fix my error down here. So go back to this. And just a hair right there and right there. Okay, so now let's do that again. Let's do mask to selection. So now I have mask to selection. We're going to go over to our selection tab that we had you pull in. And then this button down here adds selection to channel. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, now that you have a channel set in down here, we are free to deselect this guy. And then we can actually add a channel to that at any given time later. So that will now appear. So if I were to just hide this layer, let's come down here and add a layer mask. Now I have the option to do that. You can see that gets rid of everything but the cat. All right, we're going to undo that though. And what we're going to do is let's go ahead and add my picture of Mars. And I put that directly on my desktop. So there it is. There's my picture of Mars. It looks like I need to make it a little bit bigger here. So, um, well, I have a hotkey set, but I'm going to show you guys better what I'm doing. So I'm going under layer. I'm going under scale layer. And we're just going to increase the size of it a little bit. So I'm not sure exactly what size this is. Let's just increase this to 3,000. See what that does. And we're very close there. So that's my hotkey. There we are. That's better. Now we'll go ahead and drop this guy down below it. And let's kill this layer mask. Oop, I accidentally deleted the layer, not the layer mask. Kill the layer mask. We're going to hide this. Show this kitty here. Now, if you'll remember, if I head on over to add layer mask, hit the channel, boom, I get rid of everything except the cat. So now we can set our cat wherever we would like on Mars. Well, let's uh, actually apply the layer mask first. So we're going to apply the layer mask. This is going to merge the mask with the layer. So now I'm free to move the kitty anywhere that I would like on Mars. Now it's a little out of the angle is a little odd. So if you'll remember, we had some perspective tools. So we can do some various perspectives here and we can probably change some things. Let's grab the perspective tool. And we can probably just adjust the kitty a little bit so he's a little bit, he, he looks like a pancake now, but anyway, why not? We've gone ahead and put the kitty there on Mars. Let's just go ahead and do that. So yeah, when the Mars lander showed up, they didn't know they were getting a cat. Um, but anyway, there is how we can use um, use those, um, the various elements here. Let's um, Let's undo the perspective tool. There we are. And let's do one more thing. Let's make a Cheshire cat, okay? So... Let's go ahead and first we're going to add another layer mask. And with this one, we're going to do a full opacity so it doesn't appear as though anything changed. And now remember how we used the gradient before. We're going to go back to our gradient tool. And we're just going to do some adjustments here and see if we can get the kitty somewhat nebulously disappearing on us. All right, so, and let's go ahead and invert this, and I'm going to just add a little bit of coloration up to the top here. Nah, it's not going to work. Let's undo that. I want to get just a little bit more in the top there. There we are. Now we have a somewhat disappearing Cheshire cat. Uh, due to layers. Of course, I can um, disable the layer mask to show the full cat. And I can also apply the layer mask. And now we will have a single layer, which when we get rid of everything else, has some semi-transparency to it. We moved the cat a little bit, so it looks a little odd that way. Let's go ahead and move that guy back. So, so now we have a somewhat fading cat. 
So these are the applications of layer masks. Hopefully this will help you get a little bit more familiar with layer masking in GIMP. It gives you a basic overview by which you can start playing around and seeing a lot of the different functions and features. Of course, we didn't cover in this video how you can do uh, some nice text with a picture on the background. That's fairly easy to do. Add the text, select it create a layer mask, boom, there you have it. Just so many applications to this function. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what else you want to see in GIMP in the comments down below, and we will go ahead and get to those in future editions. So thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.